Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Yasmin Khan, and I'll be your chair for this afternoon. Just to let you know, we're going to have a little chat here, um, and we'll have about, I think, about 30, 40 minutes for that, and then we will come to you for questions at the end. Um, and if I could respectfully ask that if you have a question, stick your hand up, and um, I will repeat your question back so we make sure we, we get it. But to, to please do ask a question and not make a statement, if that's okay, yeah. just so we can <laughs> give you some answers. Uh, and I believe I'm right in saying that it's no photos this afternoon as well. So uh, without further ado, we'll get into this. Um, before we start, can I just ask, has everyone or men most of you here seen the play? Uh, yes, okay. In that case, I will do their introduction because that is a polite and proper thing to do. But please welcome Michelle Dockery and Douglas Central. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I was in last night, and I, for me, I watched the film for the first time two or three months ago, and I was blown away by the film. But last night, I'm still reeling from, from the play <laughs> last night. Um, the set is astounding and amazing. But before we come to any of that, how has it been to rehearse this? Like, quite literally, how did you rehearse this? <laughs> well, it, it was like doing um, a seven-week tech, technical rehearsal. Mm. I mean, from, from day one, we were in costume, which is very unusual to have your costume fitting before you even start rehearsing. Um, and we were coming into a space that had, you know, the video screen mm. there and the camera technicians and... So it was, you know, you were really kind of thrown in from the start. Um, I mean, it was difficult to imagine what it would look yeah. like, but it was, looking back, you know, extremely important from the beginning to get used to all of the technical aspects. Straight of it. away. Yeah. And w were you a long time looking and working on the text, or was it straight up on its feet? Um, no, Ivo has a thing where he likes actors to be off the book for mm. day one. So I was mostly off the book for day one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember being terrified because I'm the terribly last minute with anything. And I was, I, I was thinking, eventually, I, think, I, just, I don't know it all. I wonder if I'm going to get sacked in the first day because I don't <laughs> know it all yet. I remember walking out of the read-through, and that was the only thing I was nervous about. I wasn't nervous about the play or anybody else. I was just nervous about the fact that I didn't know no the whole lines, script yeah. yet. But, um, but you worked in order, so if you yeah, didn't quite so know the Yeah, so chronologically, by the time it got to the <laughs> bits that I didn't know, I'd managed That's to kind of cram them in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that was quite, I mean, I, I understand why that was very, why, why evil likes to work that way. And because it, it stops all that thing mm. of, of having to constantly be stopping and starting with the text. Because I think the way that he looks at it is that he wants to be able to work, and the idea of actors not being off the book stops him being able to kind of orchestrate things the way he wants to. So I understand why it works from him, but it was a bit, it's a bit weird for, for me as an actor in the theater anyway. Because, you know, I, but probably just because I'm old, but, uh, you know, if you're brought up in a kind of British theatrical tradition, you mm -hmm. kind of... 50% of what you're going to do comes from whoever your acting partner is in a mm -hmm. scene. You know, because the way in which you respond to somebody or the way in which you say your lines, 50% of that is because of how the other person is either reacting or, or speaking with you. So to have learned all those, um, it's hard to get rid of learned responses mm -hmm. out of your head. But um, I think if I was to do it again now, it, I would be much better prepared for it. But it did throw me for, for, for a little while. But, and also just the whole idea of having, I remember I counted them one day, having 20 other people in a room that weren't actors is bizarre in the stage because normally you've got maybe at the most three or four. Yeah. Mm. And you know, with the, everybody, it was like, it really felt like you were walking into an audition every day. Yeah. It was very, very intense. Um, but, you know, I mean, it was exciting, but I did feel like, geez, there was no kind of like, oh, I remember when this happened when we were doing such <laughs> and such a play. There was no stories or anything like that. Straight it was in. like just yeah. laser focus kind mm. of every day. Mm. I guess you didn't even have time to be even a little bit starstruck about Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone's starstruck about Brian from the start. <laughs> um, and that, that way of working that you describe, <clears throat> excuse me, 
it doesn't feel like, a, as you say, a particularly British theatre way mm. of working. Mm. You spend a long time, you know, with the text, talking mm. about it, mulling it over, mulling it over the topics, and of course we'll come to this because it's a very prescient play, but it seems like there was no time even for those mm. conversations or it was a different way of working. Well, I, I wonder <laughs> if it was even, even more so with this play because of the because of the enormity of it. I wonder if, uh, you know, the process on Hedda Gabler was, <coughs> was slightly different mm. and maybe there was a little bit more room for that type of rehearsal. It just, it felt like there was so much to do mm. um, and so many things going on that there wasn't the time for it. And also Evo works from 11 till four every day. Mm. Um, so it's very intense in that time and it's very formulaic, so like, like we said, you go from the beginning of the play to the end of the play. But actually, we didn't finish the end of the play, did we? Right, so yeah. you en we ended up doing the last scene, um, so up and from when Jensen walks away and when I go and have a paddy in the, in the, <laughs> in the box, we, didn't, we hadn't done any of that in wow. rehearsal. So we were coming onto the stage with this unfinished feeling you know that you're I mean you're never quite prepared when you go on stage but you hadn't actually rehearsed that bit hadn't actually done well. it but so much of it you you don't really know until you're on stage mm. with a play like this like you can never really imagine what it's going to feel like and especially having we were just saying <laughs> having a restaurant there <laughs> with the public having a lovely five course meal um, and that was something we were really apprehensive about we you know it's mm. such an unusual thing and and what I what surprised me about it actually is that I, I like that feeling of, of it, us being on stage with the audience. It, 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 that us and them thing is, is the gap is closed. Mm. And even that, that whole pre-call at the beginning when you can see us getting ready. And at first I was like, well, surely we can't do that. We're actors. You can't <laughs> see us before, <laughs> before we come on stage in character. And of course now I, I really enjoy that part of it and it actually, it, for me, it calms my nerves a little bit, being able to kind of see your audience mm. um, before you come out and play the role. The idea of it on paper must have been... Yeah, yeah. it was just different, just mm. very, very different, yeah. Have, you, have there been, have the audience been behaving on stage? Have there been any moments? No. Yeah, there haven't been any <laughs> moments. I mean, like, <laughs> you hear little bits from the guys that work in the restaurant who are serving the meals and all that kind of stuff and apparently there was <coughs> there was one audience member who turned up one night and I think uh, their whoever they were coming with hadn't turned up and they got a bit pissed and they got so pissed that they, they, they said we put a bucket next to her <laughs> <laughs> but That's I was completely so oblivious to this <laughs> Because you, I mean, like the idea that if somebody says, "Look, there's somebody who's a bit pissed and they might be sick," I mean, it's just going to go what? Terrifying. <laughs> so it's kind of better that you don't know about things like that, really. especially when you yeah. know you, you know, I'm, you know, you're doing scenes at the bar or sitting in the restaurant. You think, well, who is it? Is it one of them or? You yeah. Know? I, with your um, very intimate scene at this table, I was watching last night. The guy behind you was very respectfully Britishly going, yes, "They're acting." Well, well that, <laughs> that is so for the guys to watch that on the screen to see they watch people's reactions more than they watch yeah. us because every night it's different and it's. Um, I'd love to be able to see that. <laughs> I'd imagine you've, you've had some gig gigglers and some yeah, but last night women guy watching was their wa m watching their husbands. Yes, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I just see or the not looking at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Trying death to find something very interesting in their glass, yes. you know, while it's going on. Yeah. I, the, the guy last night, I'm sorry if you're in, by the way, it's hilarious. I just thought any minute now he's going to go, well, it's been uh, quite cold recently, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll have what they're having. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll have what she's having. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously, it's a, it's a film that, w you know, is, is notorious and, and well-known. How, how familiar were you both with it? And did you make a point of seeing it or not seeing it beforehand? Michelle, for you, was it? I, I saw the film just once mm. um, when I was offered the role. So I, you know, I hadn't seen it before. I'd obviously heard about it, but um, I watched it and that was it. Mm. I didn't go back to it. Um, and, you know, for me, that was very important not to um, make too many comparisons mm. with the role. And, um, and actually, Evo was quite encouraging. He didn't you know, we didn't really talk about the film at all during rehearsals. It's, um, 
but uh, of course it's a, an incredible mm. film and um but it's nice to be able to also just go yeah that's that and this is this is this exactly mm. yeah, yeah and y are your characters because um, I'm not just saying this to crawl, but you you are younger than to me, the Holden, character in the film. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean that did, that didn't make any difference mm. to me at all. I mean, I, I mean, I knew the film very well because I, I I love it. I think it's a great film. I mean, it, it, in some aspects, I don't know how well it's aged, um, but and it's funny because I knew that this play was happening because I had friends who were going up for it. And I thought, you know, <laughs> because William Holden was, you know, a little bit older than me, I kind of thought, oh, well, th there'll be nothing for me in that. But I thought, oh, God, I'll go back and watch the film anyway. And so I'd watched it again, and then it just came up. Um, and I don't like watching things too mm. close to going into yeah. rehearsing, because when you start rehearsing or learning something, you're very, or at least I am, I'm very suggestible. And, you know, if you get stuck in bits, you can kind of think, well, what did William Holden do? Yeah, mm. that's um, true, yeah. And so I, I didn't really want any of that in my head. And, you know, as Michelle yeah. said, Evo never referenced the film once. Nobody, neither did Brian, nobody kind of referenced. But in the film, it was a bit like, you know, there was none of that, which is great because it's really not helpful. Mm. No, it's not. It's always best to just work with what you've got. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. In some ways, I wish I hadn't have, have seen watched it. it. Mm. Yeah. I would have waited and watched it at the end. Because you do, you naturally do that thing, don't mm. you? Because mm. you you have this vision of what that scene was like in the film, and it is hard to to to, to put, that, put away. that away. Yeah. yeah. And when you look at it now, obviously with all the audiovisual elements and everything, it's an incredibly busy stage. But is it a play that is filmic, or was it the film originally that is actually in itself quite theatrical? Well, I think it's the film's very theatrical. Yeah, I mean, even. I agree. I mean, Paddy Chayefsky's script is theatrical, mm. and I think, well, well, I think, you know, anything that's set in a newsroom, because I think a newsroom's theatrical mm. in itself. I mean, I mean, you know, I've never worked in one, but, you know, from the people that I know that do, I mean, I think it's a very pressurized situation, you know, and, and mm. anything like that, you know, raises, you know, your way of being. Uh, but also, I mean, the, the performances, I mean, when you look at, I mean, not so much William Holden, actually. I mean, I think he's quite held he is, but yeah, when you look at true. you know especially you know Robert Duvall and Peter Finch and, and Faye, Faye Dunaway, Dunaway yeah. you know I mean they're they're big big performances yeah. you know I mean you and it was the style of the time really wasn't it as well yeah but even then they were I thought they were you know they were pushing it a wee bit yeah. you know um <laughs> but I mean uh, and, but but yeah. and all the better for it I yeah, thought yeah um uh, but I, which is why I kind of it always surprised me that nobody got around to doing a you know a, a theater version yeah. of it before it's, yeah. um, I must admit, for me, I did think, how is this going to work on stage? And mm. it's, um, it's amazing to see it. For me, it draws a lot of parallels of, of you know, things that we say about the media at the moment is what pulls focus. Mm. And a lot of the time, I don't know if it's just me, but I was watching all of you, but I found my eyes drawn to the screen, which is, of course, the yeah. parable of our times is, is we, live, we live by the screen. Mm. Um, do you feel like you're, you're working with what you're working, or do you ever feel like you're fighting the, the other elements, the screens and, and what have you? No. I, don't. I don't. I mean, I, I, don't. I, 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 I think I, I try not to. Mm. I think I worried that I would. I mm. would during rehearsal. It felt like, how is this going to all work? And it, you, you know, as I said, it's, it was difficult to imagine. But no, I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting. I mean, every night, you know, coming in from the South Bank during doing that yeah, scene yeah. is just every night it feels like we're doing something so cool with that i mean it's um do you do that every night that's not yeah fair. yeah no i mean i well, yeah, always kind of like want to say that to people because the amount of people they kind of go well that's a pre-record doesn't it and you go no it yeah. isn't <laughs> it varies we though. go out there and we yeah. do it live every it's night sometimes wow. it, it depends on i think it's entirely my fault that because it depends oh. on when we walk it's it depends on the dialogue as that cut happens there and i sometimes feel like if i don't move into that dialogue fast enough it feels like a car mm. so it's always I'm always sort of trying to I'm taking full responsibility for it but Thank it, you, it <laughs> <laughs> but but we did actually use the pre-record one once it was a matinee wasn't yeah. it when it was really um rainy and windy outside mm. and um it's not just actually we could brave the elements and do it mm. it could be fun but it's actually about the signal because they couldn't actually pick up pick it up to hear you. but we pre we did the pre-records in the technical rehearsal so that was back in november, november. so 
Dougie and I were going, oh my God, like we've, the, the performances have, so we've, you know, Changed, we've kind of evolved yeah. a bit mm -hmm. since then and I didn't want to watch it, did you? No, no, God, no. <laughs> I've changed I've so much yeah, since yeah. then. I felt it was live <laughs> last night and then thought, oh no, surely it can't be because I'm sure it was chucking it down, but clearly you got lucky yeah. last night no, and the rain had stopped. No, yeah. no it's fine. No, it's only once we've ever had to do that. Yeah, and apparently someone said, uh, oh, it looks like it's cleared up out there. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, it had. <laughs> we fooled them. Um, it's brilliant. I'm glad to know that yeah. it's, it's live every night. Wow. And I again, I presume you haven't had any mishaps where there's people jogging past. It's a bit lively at the weekend. Yeah, I can imagine. We all have had a drink at the BFI. One of the first times that we did it, there's uh, <laughs> kind of one of those military boot camp exercise oh, groups <laughs> where they run them. 10 kilometres, right? <laughs> and then they stop in the courtyard just outside the front of the National and they do, you know, star jumps and all kind of shit with this... <laughs> Big kind of sound yeah. system, kind of giving it. Oomps, oomps, yeah, oomps, he was oomps, like, "Give oomps. me chair!" And I'm Wasn't just it? thinking, "What are we going to do with this?" <laughs> and then there was another night when. What did you do? Just shout over? No, we well, thank you. Know, well, our stage manager, very, you know, who are always, you know, the heroes in situations yeah. like that, just went over and kind of said, "Can you please stop for like five minutes while we do this?" And they were very nice. And then there was an email conversation that happened online because we had to find where they were because you thought we can't have this, you know, for the next six months, or three <laughs> months, or whatever. And so they had a very polite email, you know, uh, dialogue, and they agreed that to, to turn up a little bit later. So it solved the problem. Um, <laughs> And what was, what, was, what was the other thing? Yeah, Paddington was getting shown at the BFI. Mm. And so there was all these trucks. We, we came outside to get ready to do it. And we suddenly there was all these trucks that weren't supposed to be there. And they'd already started cordoning off the whole area. So we couldn't go to where we'd done it. We couldn't, we, we couldn't actually physically do it the way we did it. So we had to improvise and come from the other end and just kind of do it commando, which... I had no idea that was Paddington. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh -huh. Hugh Bonneville. Yeah, it's his fault. It's his Blame fault. him. <laughs> My Usually. dad's got yeah. typical. <laughs> Upstaging me. Again. Again. <laughs> should have sent an email. I had no idea it was that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, if we come to the, the, the themes of the play, it, I don't know if it was just that it was ahead of its time <coughs> in what it was saying, or that it just seems particularly relevant yeah. and prescient now. What, it, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, I don't know. I find it very depressing. Yeah. Um, because, you know, Paddy Chayefsky was saying this in 1975, and I'm sure that somebody equally clever was saying it in 1875, <laughs> and we still haven't got it yet. So yeah. I just constantly feel like we're, we're constantly being told that this is the thing that you should be scared of, and this is the thing that you should be doing something about, and everybody's kind of going, ah, yeah, yeah, isn't that yeah. terribly scary? And we're still hearing about it 40 years on and still not doing anything about it. I find it quite kind of like, oh, God. Um, but, he, I mean, it is fabulous what he was... Um, preempting in the idea of reality television and the internet. I mean, it's astounding, yeah. really. Yeah, I mean, that first se that scene, that our first scene together, I mean, that the footage of the massacre in Detroit. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's, you know, it's like seeing a YouTube video now. Yeah. Mm. You know, we're used to, to seeing that, whereas... Desensitised. Yeah, yeah, it's like he predicted what was to come. Um, Wh what are, for both of you, what's your own relationship with, with news? <coughs> How do you... Are you avid sort of Twitter followers? Do you just watch one bulletin a night? How do you consume news? Um, I, uh, go on. I, get, I, have, I'm, uh, I sign up to The Guardian, so mm. I get my emails every day, and that's the only way that I, that's your way I get my news. Yeah. yeah, I'm not on Twitter. Or anything. I get my news from, from people that I follow on Twitter mm. Mm. Um, because I don't... <sighs> Our media, is, as far as I'm concerned, is it's weaponized now, mm. and there's no pretense really at objectivity, mm. and so I'd rather find things that I feel are more objective and less loaded one way or the other. And the best way that I've found to do that now is um, people I respect and admire, mm. uh, journalists online who pop up articles with the idea of reading this, and I go there for my news, so that's where I get it. And I mean, I know it's, it's, it's the minefield trying to read anything mm -hmm. these days because the idea of alternative facts are, you know, I mean, it is, I mean, there's a great line that Hackett says in the play, you know, when I say to um, Michelle, uh, you know, um, 
I'll put him in the hospital before I let you exploit him like a carnival freak. And Hackett says, you get your psychiatrist and I'll get mine. Yeah. And it's, you know, that seems to be the way of news now. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. You can get, you know, a bunch of experts to say anything you like, literally. Mm. Mm. And on the, on the flip side, I think there's a, a line you have, Michelle, about arti he, he's articulating everyone's rage, mm. yeah. which is, of course, what social media has allowed yeah. people to do. Yeah. And there, there's some liberty in that, but it comes with... Yeah. Well, she is of that... That generation. Gener that mm. camp, you know, mm. if, it, if it bleeds, it leads. And she, you know, she is... She sensationalises it. It's like that. she sees that correlation between you know, sensation mm. and news and entertainment. Um, and Diana, I feel, is sort of lost in that. She's kind of, she's lost her moral compass, um, which is why her relationship with Max is, it's so doomed because she can't really, she can't feel, you know, her, her feeling and her, her passion is within that, you know, she's within ratings and, you know, um, that's why she it feels like she acknowledges that as well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Which is, you know, for me, a, you know, when you're playing a character that you don't agree with, you know, or relate to mm. on any level, it's um, it it was a challenge to find the human the the human part of her actually, yeah. um, and I was adamant to find that, and so was Eva actually, because I didn't want to make her just this just this cold, you know, Machiavellian woman. I, you know, I thought there's surely there's something there. Mm, and she feels and it sort real. of, it comes out in that speech, you know, at the dinner when she yeah, says yeah. she tried to top herself, you know, she, mm. she did a lot of drugs in the 60s and she's, you know, there's this wild side to her, but, you know, fierce, fiercely intelligent, but just unable to, uh, you know, have any contact. And, and I love what you say about, you know, she's, she learned life from Bugs Bunny. And I always think of like this kind of, I don't know, the sort of the culture that we're in at the moment, this sort of, telev you know, the reality television and how mm. people get their information. And it's so modern that la it, there's something so um, pertinent about that and that sort of person, do you know what I mean? And, and I, it, it's taken me some time to sort of find her, mm. find the heart of her actually, because I didn't like her. At first. And you have to find a way. You have of to find a way into the. Yeah, character. and not judging your char mm. your character, you know. Again, another thing that seems mm, certainly at the time of the film, but you know, the, the text overall is is the ahead of its time is the sort of gender role reversal that you have in the relationship, which is that I'm going to put this in sort of, but. Mm he fancies her more, you know, to put it at its mm. basis level, that he needs her more. And mm. you don't often see that. You often see the woman very wanting of, of the man. Yeah. Which is an interesting one to play. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's, it was, I think it's really tricky, actually, because in the scene that we've got where when you come into the office, the mm. only, the, I, I always worried about, you know, the only line that I've got <coughs> That I say, and, and <coughs> oh, and I thought you were, I was hoping you were looking for an emotional involvement with a craggy middle-aged man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think with, especially the way things are today, I think the only person, I mean, like, if you heard that, if somebody came, if you're down there to talk about business and talk about work, mm -hmm. and somebody, and a, you know, a man, you know, however many years your senior, Except if that, that was mm -hmm. their reply to you pitching an idea to mm -hmm. them, you kind of think, I mean, I, I, was, I kept on thinking, what kind of man would come out with something like that? And it's just, I could, it was very difficult to get myself away mm. from a creepy old man mm. Um, mm. and try to find that based on something else. Mm. Um, but as far as, you know, the roles kind of being reversed a bit, I mean, I, I, I quite like that. I, I had no trouble with that. Mm. Um, I, I, yeah, Jesus, I mean, the more the merrier with that stuff. Mm. Um, to me, it feels in, the, in that particular moment, to me certainly, it didn't feel, it felt like he was very self-aware that he was almost becoming a cliche, as he's, as he's a middle-aged well, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, mean, I, I think he's, I mean, also there's another thing mm. with the idea of the roles being reversed. I mean, you have somebody who is cheating on their wife mm. and then coming to his, the person he's having an affair with and talking about how painful it is for him. 
you yeah. know, there is a bit, little bit of like, yeah. oh, the, oh, you know, you and your poor man pain. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there is a wee bit of that. So, I mean, I don't think it's completely no. reversed in, 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 in that way. But, um, but I think they're, they're, they're very human. I mm. think, you know, when yeah. you say outside that, you know, it's a great tragedy, it yeah. is a little bit like yeah. that, because I think we both know we're probably screwed yeah. from the start, yeah. you know. But I, I can't help it, because I think he's teetering about all over the place, because everything's, it's like Jenga with him. Yeah. All the bits are just being taken away from his life. And yeah. it's all just about to come tumbling down. And yeah. I think, you know, you know, Diana's the catalyst for mm. that. I, he knows it from the start, that yeah. something is going to set it off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I also think. Don't you think it's the language is inc it's it's really complex in places. Like it's yeah. not mm. it's not black and white. Mm. Like it, it's surprising, and and sometimes as an actor, you kind of you want to really find what's right. Like what is the right way of saying this, or the right way of responding. And actually, for us, what I'm I'm loving is now that we're right into the run of it. You know, we're halfway through now. We're still finding different ways of of shifting there's moments that shift in the scene especially those two scenes no yeah us. yeah no no absolutely and i mean i'm enjoying doing that a lot yeah. more now than i ever have before absolutely it, it was seemed, quite a struggle yeah, that yeah, first that's yeah. that, that's that usual office. to still find sort of this long into a run now to find new moments in scenes like that oh well, hopefully hope yeah. yeah i mean i i mean i haven't done a play in six years so mm. i mean from what i remember you're still exploring but there's something about this play and the writing that it, it can be it's like when i say not anymore you know he mm. says something going on between you and hackett and she says like even in not anymore there are uh, so many different ways mm. that i can express that like the other night i thought maybe she's really gutted actually that she didn't get both she didn't you know she didn't get what she wanted and uh, and, he, and mm. still mm. have uh, her thing with Max, you know. Um, but then sometimes I love playing that anymore, you know, a cheeky, it's, it's, and it's, it doesn't, um, with some plays, I think if you play too much, it really, it jolts it and shifts the, the scene. But mm. with this, it's like, we're always kind of finding new stuff, aren't we? Like I love our last scene yeah, and how that has, like I'm always changing her reaction to to his breakdown mm. in that moment. The one um, where he's on yeah, the floor next to yeah yeah. Um, it's great to, to and we're a very playful company actually. Mm. Mm. We're all sort of we all kind of have a little play. It's great, you know. No one's sort of rigid about what they're doing. Aren't I they? think this is also. I mean, this is. I mean, when you said at the beginning, it was like a seven-week tech. <laughs> This has been like rehearsed to within an inch of its life. Yeah. And so it's a really, really well-oiled machine. And the good thing about that is, is that there's room then to experiment. Because I mean, I always think of it, so it's a wee, a wee yeah. bit like a band going into a studio to record an album. You know, you play every instrument, whatever, to, to, to get them all perfect. And by the time you take it out on the road to play live, it leaves room, because you all know everything so well, it leaves room for somebody to go off and riff off a wee bit. And if it kind of comes to its natural end, you always got that bass line to come back to. Yeah. And it feels it's so tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it feels a yeah. lot like that in yeah. this play. is because it's, it's so kind of, and also because you can't mess about with this too much because so many of the cues mm. are so vital. Mm. So much of everything is like Amazing. set up, you know, there's no room for, for that. You know, I mean, mm. the timings of the show are incredibly uh, yeah. similar mm. every night. You know, mm. I mean, the, the show only goes out by maybe four minutes, yeah. you I know, either a couple yeah. of minutes down or a few minutes up. I mean, it's, it's pretty much on the money every night. Mm. Whereas, you know, other plays that I've done, I'm sure you're the same, oh, yeah. you know, they can go out by about 11, 10, 11, 12 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but this is really slick, you know. Mm. Yeah. Um, and before we will get to questions from you all very shortly, but because obviously you've both got backgrounds in, in other forms as well, particularly television, mm. um, I'm not going to ask you which you prefer, because I know people always say don't ask me that, but do you, do you work in very different ways for something like this versus Downton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just, it's just so different. Mm. It's, a, it's, um, it's such a different way of working. Mm. Um, your, you know, your hours are so different. You're, you're playing a scene and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, you're learning something and then it goes away. You know, with the play, it stays with you for however many months, you know. Um, I don't really have a preference, actually. I love doing both. Um, 
what's great about this, of course, is that there's a bit of there is a bit of both, which is unusual yeah. doing a play. And and I am conscious of that when we do that scene outside that you are acting for television at that point. At that yeah, point, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and and that's it, that's so unusual in in doing a play. You know, it's it's what not what you normally do. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they are, they are, they're entirely different. I want to go back to my band metaphor again. Because <laughs> like film and television <laughs> is very much like recording an album. Mm. Mm. You know, because you can do everything. You can get everything until you get the thing right. Yeah. Where I, and you do it, you know, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing the bass first or the drums first or the vocal last or whatever, which is very much the same in film and television where, you know, you can be doing some scene from near the end and the first day and then you do the beginning, you know, halfway through and everything is out of whack. Whereas, you know, on the stage, you know, you're doing from the beginning to the end every night and you get to have a go at it. Mm. And the bits that you miss or you, 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 you don't quite find, um, you have always got a chance to have another go at it the next, the night. next night and yeah. the yeah. fact that you know there's you know 800 people out there every night and there is nothing like that in the world yeah. and uh, you know I, I wouldn't swap that for the world i miss that because there's noises that you get in the theater that you just <laughs> never and, and you never experience anything like it in any other facet of your life um, you know, when you've got an audience and you know you've got them, there's a silence that you get in a mm. theater that you don't mm. get anywhere else ever. And it's, it puts the hairs in the back of your neck up mm. because you just think, it's, there's something really great about that. To, yeah. And to the same extent, when you've got a night where people, you can hear people rustling or coughing or whatever, and you're just like, it's me, it's my fault. Because <laughs> otherwise they should be listening and they're not. They're thinking about that we tickle in the back of your throat, whereas you don't want them thinking about that. Mm. You know. But that, you know, that's like nothing else. So. Do you feel more? Co I'm asking Dougie a question now. Yes. Do you feel more comfortable <laughs> on stage or on or when you're doing film work? I was asked that, and I. I've, I mean, I I feel like this is my house. Yeah, me too. Mm. That's how I feel. This is where I started. I started yeah. in the theatre, and so you know, I mean, the, an empty theatre is like my house. Um, I, I like yeah. it here. Yeah. And I s I still haven't got used to the idea of acting and there being this these, you know so many you know a, a huge crew and yeah, yeah. Yeah. people in you know you you have that sort of audience but they're not really there mm. yeah yeah that's they're not right, there yeah. to, to, to you know they're to watch your three feet from your face yeah, yeah and i i don't think i've you know i i wonder if i'll ever get used to it you know whereas i feel the same on stage i feel this where i feel more comfortable but again it's like you it's where i started so. yeah. uh, but again this place particularly unusual because the audience are the audience of, and it's so there's the interactive element they're mm. they're very much there and they're part of the show aren't yeah they? it's yeah. wonderful yeah. i mean that aspect of it is amazing and it makes it so every night when brian sits there yeah. it's and i i get to watch it from there it's just sometimes i have to turn up stage because i i'm going to burst out laughing yeah. you know because of the reactions or the ad-libbing that he does it's just magic and you just you you can't you can't compare it I don't know if what anybody else felt, but I know I was on the edge of my seat going, oh God, please don't let it go wrong. T don't let someone in the audience say something terrible or whatever. I'm sure they're all very <laughs> respectful. But just the nerves of someone, you know, having one of the actors yeah. go into the audience. It's yeah. There was one lady one night, she was really uncomfortable, probably because she was just Terrified. a diehard Brian Cranston uh. fan. Was just like, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> he sat next to me. Um, <laughs> but he, I think he made her feel feel more comfortable by the end yes <laughs> the lady last night was quite funny and he said are you enjoying the show and she went yes 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 that I was mean that, that I was mean the first time show, yeah. it was more <laughs> yeah it was quite interactive that it was lovely it was yeah and on that note we're bang on the nose of four so I must wrap up but listen thank you to all of you because brilliant questions and thank you to Michelle and to Douglas thank as well you. thank you